Our Italy will host the next major international meeting on Libya. Leaders from NATO and the Arab League will gather this Thursday to plan the political transition following the departure or ousting of Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. And as stalemate grips Libya, a NATO spokesman says the use of ground troops may be the only way to move the situation forward. Aerial bombardment of Libya has reached a dead end, according to NATO. Libya's leader, Colonel Gaddafi, has dug in defensive positions. Meanwhile, civilian casualties from Allied bombing continue to mount. NATO spokesman revealed their solution, send in ground troops. The UN Security Council should adopt a new resolution on Libya. Resolution 1973 does not envisage land operations. We need a new resolution. Western forces planned that all along, says a leading U.S. law professor. Clearly what we're seeing uh, unfold here in Libya is a pre-existing war plan uh, by NATO, by the British, by the French, by the Americans to attack Libya. Everything now is going according to plan, which is why I believe that since they have failed to uh, uh, depose Gaddafi with the steps uh, so far, the next stage will be moving into a ground invasion. NATO powers have duped the international community into supporting war, notes one author. Protecting civilians was the claim, but grabbing the country's resources is their real goal. Yeah, this is one of the most uh, uh, brazen transgressions of, of uh, rights of nation, national sovereignty and international law that, that we've seen in the post-World War II period. The West, the U.S., uh, France and, and Britain have been covertly, according to the evidence that's leaking out, covertly arming the opposition to Gaddafi in hopes of grabbing control of the oil in, in the uh, different parts of Libya. The Libyan government promises hell for NATO if it sends in ground troops. Some agree such a war may be tougher than expected. We will see increased military activity, not only in the air, but also on the ground. And maybe this will solve the problem from the perspective of the NATO countries. But maybe it will simply get in, in, us all into a deeper uh, imbroglio. Bombing from 30,000 feet, coalition soldiers feel fairly safe. But anti-war activists warn putting troops on the ground risks not just more civilian killing, but NATO deaths as well. The further away they get from high tech and the, and the nearer they get to low tech, then the greater the danger of casualties on both sides. Turkey, China and Russia have all criticised the bombardment of Libya. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov thinks NATO's already gone far beyond the first UN resolution to maintain a no-fly zone. He hints a second resolution to move in ground troops may not come as easy. Now several nations feel tricked. If anybody wants to ask for this mandate, welcome to the UN Security Council. We will discuss, try to understand what is planned, because the digressions from the mandate that we are seeing now are enough to learn lessons. With international opposition on the rise, NATO states face an uphill task to make the case for more war. While Britain's Prime Minister ruled out sending ground troops to Libya, his Defence Secretary admitted to Parliament they plan exactly that. But UN members are angered at the number of civilian deaths from NATO bombing and are unlikely to welcome escalation of the conflict. Daniel Bushell, RT, London.